Hi, welcome to my channel, Reader Woman. My name's Judy, and let's talk book tags. In particular, let's talk the Penguin Classics tag. I have really been enjoying watching Steve Donahue created this tag, his slow march of the penguins <laughs> through his, through his uh, Penguin Classic uh, books. I mean, I just thoroughly have enjoyed it. And um, and when he put out the tag, it's been a while, but um, it made me consider, uh, what, what books do I have that are Penguin Classics? I was surprised, actually, at how few I actually had of the Black Spines, um, particularly since I just bought four. <laughs> I don't know, in the last six months um, at a used bookstore. So, I don't know. Um, so, I, I have things to say about it and I will try to get the words out <laughs> rather than just thinking them. Um, the number one question he has, um, Penguin Classics are the best reprint volumes in the whole world. Um, how many do you currently own? So I've gone through, of course I didn't count. <laughs> okay, so I've got these four that I just bought that have the pretty little white doohickey here, stripe going through it. So four there, one, two, another four. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have 14. 14, not many. And I thought, because I saw somebody else do it, I thought we'd just go through and see what I have. Um, I've shown these before. I have, um, these are the ones that I picked up, uh, one of which I'm kind of disappointed I did, but um, I got Arthur Miller's um, Death of a Salesman, which I thought that was a really nice cover. And I do, I do like plays. Um, I actually have quite a few plays. I'm in the middle of trying to organize. I'm not talking <laughs> micro-organizing, just general organizing. But this bookcase behind me is going to be uh, plays, poetry, plays, poetry, and um, maybe my foreign language, and then down below I have um, my Harold Bloom uh, collection. Uh, so I thought I would have um, literary criticism, um, things like that. Although, since we're talking books, I, I do have The Common Reader by Virginia Woolf, but I'm not gonna move it here. I, for the most part, I like to keep my collections together. Now, granted, I have this big uh, Thomas Hardy um, uh, volume of poetry. Is it the complete? Yeah, complete poems. I'm going to leave it in poetry. <laughs> so, so while I say one thing, I do another. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Here's the one I regret. is the uh, Giovanni Verga, a Cavalleria Rusticana and Other Stories. Um... And the reason I regret it is I hate books that have underlining and marks in it. And now that I'm going through it, I can't find the marks, but I know it has it in here. And um, yeah, like that. I hate that. I just simply hate it unless I do it <laughs> once again. So I wish I hadn't bought this. I may discard this. If you've read this, let me know if it's something I need to keep, keep hold of and read. But just because of the marks in it, I may get rid of that. Then I came across this, which I hate, Netflix, um, Shirley Jackson's um, The Haunting of Hill House. I hate movie things, but Anyways, I'm glad to have this. I have nothing by Shirley Jackson, so this is on my TBR. And then my true treasure of my find was this lovely little hardbound copy of um, Pygmalion 
by George Bernard Shaw. It just says Bernard Shaw. Isn't that odd? Huh. I wonder why. Isn't that weird? That's what it says, Bernard Shaw. Huh. Okay. Well, anyways, um, this is my favorite movie. Uh, the 1930 something adaptation uh, with Wendy Hiller and I can't remember the name of the guy who played Ashley in Gone with the Wind um, who was a great actor <laughs> anyways I, I I love both the play and also the movie so anyways when I saw this I just have this horrible copy um, that I picked up many many years ago so I was absolutely thrilled about this one then we get into the love of my life. <laughs> um, it was the one thing when I hit college that I learned what really kind of made me happy. And exploring the Greeks really made me happy. Um, I have for plays. I have the, um, for Sophocles, the Theban plays. And you can tell they're really old. They don't, they're not the modern with the beautiful spine. They're the small mass market paperback size. Um, but, uh, you know, I've always loved these things and, um, I'm so glad I have these. Um, so Sophocles, I have, um, let's see here. Oh, let's see. Euripides, The Back Eye, and Other Plays. Isn't that beautiful? You know, the other thing that um, learning about the Greeks gave me such a love for the Greek faces. If I were a thief, I'd steal one because <laughs> I know I can't afford one. But anyways, um, I uh, I do like Euripides. Aristophanes has probably always been my favorite. Um, yes, I differ from Steve. <laughs> um, I appreciate the emotion uh, that that is held. So Lysistrata, um, the Acarnians and the clouds so um and i have more uh in other volumes it's just these are what was bought in the penguin classics and in fact i just bought them for my class i also have um thucydides uh the peloponnesian war and and <laughs> herodotus the histories yeah who doesn't love Herodotus? And I've shown it before, but I have the landmark Herodotus with all the maps and all the visuals. Um, I'd pull it out, but I'm in the middle of moving my books and it's in the bottom of one of these bags of books. So I can't pull it out, but, um, but yeah, because that's also one thing I'm gonna put here are my Greek books. Um, so I have, I have Robert Graves, uh, uh, Greek mythology, and um, I have some books on the art and various other things. So I'm going to have a little Greek collection here as well on my um, in those bookcase. Then the others are kind of all over the place. Um, I have um, Montaigne, uh, the essays, and um, I think this is all I have of his. So. And I don't believe these are the complete essays, so I'm sure this is uh, uh, annotated. Um, and uh, uh, but anyways, uh, also what a wonderful author. <laughs> There's a reason these things are called Penguin classics. Um, I have, and this is one I think I pilfered, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Goncharov. Uh, them off and uh, I definitely have not read this at this point um, but I do have a true love for uh, the Russian the uh, classic Russian authors so um, 
one day. Uh, Erasmus, Praise of Folly. Um, I know I bought this for a class. And, um, yeah, I tend not to write in my books. <laughs> um, Flaubert's uh, Madame Bovary. Can I say how over this book I am? <laughs> I, I just don't know. I don't. I don't like it. It's about a silly woman. A silly woman who destroys her life and her husband's life. Anyways. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not a fan. And then another one that I haven't read. Um, Henry James's What Maisie Knows. Or What Maisie Knew. I'm sorry. And this is the only one in this, uh, in this version with the beige around the edge. I really thought this was beautiful, beautiful addition for the cover. So that is all I have in Penguin Classics. Now I am going to do another video here um, because when I was going through my books, I realized I have a lot of penguins. I have mostly the orange gold uh, colored spines, not the classics, but I wanted to talk about them because I find them very interesting. If we're talking about penguins, let's go the whole shebang. All right, number two. Um, penguins evolved roughly 70 million years ago. Uh, what's your history with penguin classics? Well, I think I just said it. Um, for the most part, I bought them when I was going to college as an undergraduate. Um, they were just required for the uh, classes and I have to say it was like the first time in my life that somebody said go spend a fortune on books and I'm like yeah I'm there <laughs> I really enjoyed that about college <laughs> um all right, number three uh the penguin classic logo is of course a penguin the world's most famous famous flightless bird uh, what's a classic that just didn't take flight for you? Um, I have to say, my book club, we read The Great Gatsby. And I'm just kind of like, meh? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not... I'm a modernist. I love my James Joyce, I love my uh, Gertrude Stein, and I'm appreciating more and more Virginia Woolf. Um, and maybe it's just because I, I just don't see where uh, Fitzgerald fits there. And I thought it was a story, I thought it was an okay story, I didn't think it was the most beautiful prose ever. Um, so yeah, I was kind of disappointed in that one. But I'm sure there's a lot more I'm disappointed in. I just haven't read them yet. <laughs> um, the emperor penguin is the most recognizable species, um, but the Adelie is everyone's favorite. What's your favorite penguin classic? Well, that would have to be Herodotus. But you know, it's the one thing, seeing all of Steve's collection, there's a lot I want to get. And um, I haven't been keeping a list, and I should. I don't want to have to go through all 50 million videos to check it out. But, um, but yeah, it's particularly the older books. I really feel a need to collect some of them. And um, so what am I talking about? Well, I want a collected work of um, Johnson, Dr. Johnson. I have a copy of an annotated um, Life of Johnson by Boswell, but I would like his works. Um, I know I want to try Horace. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot, particularly in the older uh, 
books that you just don't come across. Edmund Spencer, I want, I want the Fairy Queen. I want that book. Um, yeah, there's just a lot out there that I want to collect. Let's see here. Um, Penguin Classics began in 1946 with E.V. Ryu's uh, translation of The Odyssey. Uh, what's your favorite book from 1946 or the 40s in general? When I looked at 46 on Goodreads, the one that really stood out to me the first was Hiroshima uh, by John Hersey. Um, I read that in high school. My parents had a copy on in the their little library. And, you know, and I read it and it was horrifying and it really made me understand why war and these weapons of mass destruction are so horrific. We really need to work on how to deal with other people and cultures in a respectful, firm, but Oh, gosh, I can't think of the right word, but not collegiate, but, you know, we're going to disagree, but we're going to work together to not drop bombs on each other. And, and the world hasn't gotten there yet. We still like to drop bombs. And uh, so, um, so that book had a, had a huge impact in my life. Um, and then as a little girl, <laughs> The Maud Hart Lovelace books, um, the uh, Betsy and Tacy books. Now, I didn't start with the little girls. Um, I came across it in my local library, and the one that I picked up first was Heavens to Betsy, because I thought the f title was funny. And so that's Betsy in high school. And so I never really liked the little girl <laughs> section, but I... I I did tolerate it, and I think it's a sweet homage to an earlier time that, um, that yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, I think it's a nice children's series that uh, still, still works. Um, Penguin Classics tries to enshrine the classics of literature. Name some books you'd like to see enshrined. Now, <clears throat> I did a little bit of research, and I personally think that Gertrude Stein deserves at least a couple more. They have, um, they have only three lives, which is a, I think that's her play or something. Um, I think the they should at least have the autobiography of Alice B. Toklas which is a classic um, that appeals to people quite well. I, I would also argue for everybody's autobiography by her, I think, which is brilliant. Um, you could even go with The Making of Americans. Um, I'm not sure why they aren't doing those. Um, personally, I think P.G. Woodhouse needs to move from the orange back to the black I think he definitely has stood the test of time and he should be in the Penguin Classics section. Um, so uh, there's definitely uh, some need for, for moving books on. Um, I, I know that. <laughs> um, and I'm going to end that here and I will be back and we will be talking more penguins. Hope you're staying safe in this time, and uh, thanks for joining me. We'll talk again soon. Bye.